Hey everybody, welcome back to Golf Test Dummy, the channel where I use my game to help your game. Hopefully I'm going to be living up to that motto in the coming weeks and months as I take on a new swing philosophy and try to change my swing based on that. So after battling inconsistent rounds, not necessarily an inconsistent swing, but inconsistent rounds based on either good ball striking or bad ball striking, and the fact that I'm the golf test dummy and that's what this channel is all about, is to explore, I'm going to take on my next swing change and um, try to adjust and copy along with a philosophy that's been on YouTube for quite a while now. I'm talking about the Zen Golf System. So if any of you over in the UK follow Robin Matthews Williams or you follow Marcus Bell, who is the Zen Golf Mechanic, you know that out of his teaching bay, using his footwork instruments and uh, his, his rocker board and his double swivel foot plate, all these different things that he uses to teach people proper footwork and better footwork in golf, um, one thing that I've noticed is, is that he never teaches swing mechanics. I've never seen him teach swing mechanics. Now, that's not to say that somebody might not walk in and he might give them a few tips here and there on, you know, a grip or, you know, how to set up to the golf ball, maybe how to, how to stand, how to get your weight distributed and all that. But, you know, for the most part, the videos that he's putting out on YouTube, they're not talking about hand positions or arm positions or creating lag or, or any of that stuff. It's all footwork mechanics. And basically, you let your body and your arms track what your feet are doing. And your feet are just trying to go from left foot to right foot. I've been working for the past week just in the house with no golf ball, just swinging a club back and forth over and over, just trying to let my feet and the shifting of the weight distribution in my feet dictate where the club goes, where it moves, how quickly it moves, and on and on and on. So... I've been doing that in the house for a week now with no, no golf ball, not hitting balls, just trying to get the motion over and over and retrain my body, retrain my feet. And now I'm out here in the garage today hitting some foam golf balls and I'm trying to actually put it to practice and just work on changing my swing either in the house or in the garage and soon to be on the driving range. Let's see what I've been working on. The early extension is going away little bit at a time. But the flip afterward is still there. Right foot to the sky. Left foot. No, no wrist break. No wrist break. There will be wrist cocking and wrist breaking, but I'm going to think straight but straight. That's the way I'm going to feel. Right foot, left foot. Right foot, left foot. Loose arms. Firm hands. Right foot to the sky. Left foot. No flipping, no flipping, right foot set to the left, no wrist cock, dead hands, right foot, left foot. All right, so if you've been following the, the channel for a while, you know that I suffer from a few things. Uh, I have a stall in my, in my downswing where I stall out. And then I have early extension where I'm extending and dumping all my power at the golf ball. I don't rotate through. I don't get through. And then after impact as the club's coming through, I have this flip real quick. Like it's okay to be flipped up here when your arms are kind of parallel, you know, because that just means that you kind of got up there. But I'm flipping right here. And that is way too early. That means I'm flipping at the golf ball. And that means that my, my, my swing whether I'm having a good day or a bad day, ball striking is completely dependent on this quick timing that happens, I mean, faster than you can possibly imagine. And you may have some good days and you may have some bad days, but ultimately that club just needs to be left alone. In my opinion, in my opinion, that club just needs to kind of be left alone through the impact area. 
to do its own thing. And if you're manipulating it through the impact area, then you're going to be relying on this just extremely athletic, incredible sense of timing to have a good ball striking day. And like I said, some days will be good and some are bad. One thing that Marcus teaches a lot of people and myself included have gone through and we wanted to, we want to find consistency. If you ask us, yeah, we want to find more distance or yeah, maybe you want to get rid of your slice. But really one of the main things that golfers want is consistency. And in my opinion, based on what I've been learning here in the past few months and some of my own sort of philosophy coming to be, I feel like consistency is for the driving range where the lie is the same, the slope is the same, the target can be anything out there over and over, the same target, the same distance, you're in the same position, you have the same club over and over. You can be consistent in that, but what you really want, and what I hear Marcus say a lot, and even Robin has talked about this as well, is adaptability. So no two shots on the golf course are alike. You're, you're never gonna be hitting the same club time after time, you're never going to be playing from the same distance, the same lie, the same anything, really. I mean, all of it is going to be different. And you may have similar shots. Maybe you've got three drivers that you're going to be hitting off of three different tees that basically require a baby draw. Okay, so those are similar shots. But still, you, you want adaptability more than you want consistency when you're talking about the golf course, in my opinion. So what I've been working on is just my footwork and allowing my feet to just dictate what's going on and to feel through the shot what's actually happening and getting your mind in the right place is a big part of Zen Golf too. But as, as for right now, I'm just working on the physical components. So let's see how it's going. I've got foam balls and I've got an eight iron in my hand. I do not have track man. I don't have anything like that. We're just guessing at the yardages. So when I set up, nice and balanced, arms very relaxed, but hands gripping the club firm enough to control it. That's one of the things he talks about, is that somebody ought to be able to grab this club and move my arm all around, but not be able to pull the club out of my hands. So I set up, I've got my grip stable, but my arms are just responsive. They're just responsive. And then from here, right foot, left foot. Take the hit out of it. I have a very ingrained hit instinct. A lot of us do. We get ball bound, we focus on it, the hit, the impact, the anticipation of the hit. Uh -uh. You've got to erase that, and that's where the practice is going to come in. Right foot swinging back is easy, but then it's real hard to keep your mind focused on stepping left foot and just turning. Just right foot and transfer your weight to your left foot. So many people myself included, have the issue that you can do right foot all day. Hey, right foot, I'm nice and relaxed. <sighs> and that's what happens. So that's where you kind of have to take your focus off of the ball a little bit and think more about your feet. And that is very difficult to do. It's going to take some time and some effort and some practice for most of us. But if I can step in and I can go right foot, left foot, and forget the hit, and forget about trying to turn. Just step onto the right foot, and it naturally occurs. Step back onto the left foot, and it naturally occurs. That's what I'm working on. That's sort of the state of my game. And until next time, I'll see you. I'm going to continue working on this. Hope you're enjoying the series.